Hello world, welcome back to Cybercrete and today in this video we are going to see how you can easily display the real time data of any cryptocurrency prices onto your website. And of course you can take this skills and apply it to the stock prices or anything that you want to display dynamically on your web page. So first of all, uh, let me just quickly show you how this thing is going to work. So uh, first of all, uh, let me just code. So if I uh, run the code here, now we are going to open up our browser and in our web browser we will see how these things are going to work so here is the local host so i will just uh, click on command click to open up this website so uh, first of all you can see that uh, the website or, or the price is zero and then it changes to this price and then it is now going to keep on dynamically changing because we are going to use a free api that is why uh, this api does not is not able to uh, accept uh, that much fast response time so that is why uh, sometimes when the api request just fails uh, the price is going to show zero but you can fix it by increasing the number of time that you are going to fetch this data for so you can see uh, now we are going to see this uh, data and it is going to keep on constantly increasing okay now it is 66 and this will keep on showing the real time bitcoin prices here so if you want to create something like this Please make sure to watch this video till the very end and please make sure to subscribe to our channel and yes, a like will be appreciated. So first of all, let's try to see what we have, we are trying to do in this code. So for this video, uh, you should have the familiarity of using APIs and I have created an API on a video on how you can get the bitcoin prices in real time using an api and i will just put the link uh, some up here so you can go and check if you haven't to watch that video and first of all here we are just importing a bunch of libraries and then here we are creating our flask app that uh, of course you know that is going to create the instance of the flask then here we are going to write our get price functions and the work of this function is to get the data from the website and then display it to the user or just uh, when the, whenever the user is going to ask and the website that we are going to use to get these prizes are coincap.io so this is the website that we are going to get the data from then here you see we are requesting requests is just the library that we have imported so here we have requests of course this request with s and this request both are different just remember that so first of all we are requesting the data we are doing a get request passing in the url so here is the url and in the header and the data we are just passing mp dictionary because uh, it does not require something special then here we are checking if the response code or the status code is 200 which means yes we have got the data successfully then we are taking the data of the bitcoin price so if you have seen that video so this is what it is going to do it is going to go inside the data 0, 0 is the place of Bitcoin and you can go on like 0 is Bitcoin, 1 is Ethereum and uh, it just depends on the ranking. And then here we are saying the price in USD. So we are getting the price in USD. Then here we are just printing data for just fun purpose or just for debugging. Then here we are returning the data. So this data is going to be the price of the Bitcoin that we are returning. And if the status code is not 200 which means we encounter some problem then we are simply returning zero because that means we haven't got anything to display but we don't want it to display some error message or something like that and that is the reason why we are simply returning zero so first of all okay uh, we are here we are getting the price this line is not necessary but i have written it anyway okay so here you can see first of all we are creating a route slash crypto price and this is the route which is going to respond back with the json format of the data so here we are just writing uh, given the function name as stuff you can write whatever stuffs you want of course here is the global price uh, this we also don't need i was just experimenting with this code so i'm just removing the things that we don't really want and here we are getting the price so here we are calling the get price function so this function get price is called here so whenever anyone is going to go to this slash crypto price he is going to hit this url then this function is going to come and this function is then going to send the data to this uh, coincap.io it is going to get the data from there and then it is going to bring up the data and just return the data accordingly and that will be stored inside price 
so here you see uh, return jsonify results price so here we are going to return the results and uh, in the inside the result variable we are going to uh, simply store the price and this is a simple thing this app dot routes here we are just routing it to the index.html where our most of the code is going to be so in this the most important part is not the flask so in the flask of course uh, this was the thing but uh, this was the quite the easy part but now we are going to move ahead to the javascript part because javascript is what is going to be uh, making us able to do this real time job so here we have written the simple code and here i am just running it on my local host and this is the port that i have specified so if i go to index.html first of all the most important thing you have to include this jquery library because we are going to use the jquery ajax for doing this task so here first of all you can see this is a script tag and if i just minimize it here we are writing this script inside this so this is the entire script that we are going to write so first of all we are saying for dollar script root so what this is going to do so this is going to so okay let's try to read what it is actually doing request so you if you pay close attention it is enclosed between those two curly brackets so what does this two curly bracket means in flask it is of course jinja which is the flask syntax so request request is the library that we have imported here and if you see this uh, request we haven't used it anywhere inside this code why we have imported it then we have imported it because we need it inside here so here we are saying request dot script root so this script root uh, just don't get confused with this variable name uh, of course if you know programming you know that uh, variable name in a smaller letter and capital letter just means two different thing and here you see script root script underscore root it is going to say of this like uh, this is a flask app so it is going to go to the main flask app root and then uh, here we are saying whatever data we are going to get we are going to convert it into json and it should be in safe mode whatever data we are getting just pass it to parse it to json and then use it inside safe mode so here in inside this script root we are going to just route to the main app and then from there uh, from our main app whatever url that we are going to strike from that url we are going to get a json data so let's see uh, how it is going to happen so here we have defined oh, sorry here we are defining interval id so interval id uh, we are just naming the variable because we are setting that in how many seconds we actually want this things to happen because we uh, it is a free api it is not a paid api that it can just give you access for every second or every millisecond it is just a free open source api so it needs some time so here here we are just giving it the time of 5000 milliseconds which is equal to 5 seconds and here what is update value so here we are saying that uh, call this function after every 5000 milliseconds call this functions after just this milliseconds and of course uh, we are not using the double parenthesis because here we need to call this function again and again and once whenever we are using this set interval function we actually pass the functions like this so this is the function name don't get confused with variable name so here it is a function as you can see function update value so it is a function so now we are going to the function now we need to get the json file dot get json script route which means go to slash local host uh, port uh, 444 slash then what we need to do then then go to slash crypto price then you are going to hit okay sorry uh, hit this function this crypto price and of course this method it get because we are getting the data and just simply posting it there is no security required then this is going to call the price function so which is going to indeed get the price of bitcoin and just uh, make it up here then here you see dot get json we need to put a json data inside that and that's why we are using jsonify so this jsonify is going to convert this integer data or float data or whatever type of data that you have into its uh, into a json format and that is what our javascript can understand so first of all it is going to get so you can simply pass the url if you have some other url if uh, from where you can just directly get the json you can just pass the url here then what we need to do after getting this data so whatever data we are going to get here after this you can see this is a comma then inside this dot get dot get json we are passing this function data and here is the data that we will get so in this data will be stored this 
uh, will be having this price the price of the bitcoin so uh, this function is going to do it is going to use uh, javascript functions again so it is going to select hashtag result so uh, here you can see here we have created a span id result and here we have just input question mark so what it is going to do it is going to select this span it is going to select it and it is going to change the text or dot text is basically used for updating the text in real time inside the javascript so here we are writing text and what we need it to be updated with so here we are saying data dot results because here you see the variable name that we have created was result so uh, the price will come inside the result so data dot result just the same thing that we do while working with dictionary so inside data we are going to get the result and i am just doing console.log it is of course not at all required but this is just i have used this because of this debugging purpose so i i, I can see the console what is going to go there and how the things are going to work that is why i am just using this console.log of course if you are on you have confirmed this that it is working perfectly fine you can delete it then i have just written this stop text color uh, so this is just for if you want to implement something else and you just want to uh, use it to give a functionality of pressing stop button and then the price or price of the things just stop getting updated you can just use this function or else you can just simply ignore this function at all then here we are on the body tag on body so here we are saying on load update value which means as soon as this website loads we are going to update the value it is not that uh, when the website is going to load just wait 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 and then upload value update value but just update the value as soon as this web page occurs so here is simple h1 tag here is the paragraph tag inside the paragraph tag we are saying btc span id we are just creating uh, a span tag because we need to select something in javascript in order to simply update it and that is why we are creating a span tag with the particular id and here we are writing this uh, question mark is some uh, in the case something does not happen well that is why this question mark is here then this script is called again and this is just to get element by id of result dot inner html this is used to just update the value and then here button on click it is just for stopping the purpose so here on click it is simply going to call this stop text color and this is going to clear interval of interval id this is just going to stop at whatever rate that you have stopped it so i think uh, this makes the code completely understandable so if uh, you can simply play around this values of 5000 to 8000 9000 to change to see if this uh, app is not giving you some null value so i will just open up the terminal i'll just go to the python one i will just clear it i will just write python sorry python app.py and now if i run it it is simply going to run on our localhost and if you can see here we are printing the data so here we are printing the data that is why the price of the bitcoin is basically printed here now if i just open up it uh, open it here let's open this so here you can see the price of bitcoin is simply updating so uh, what i will do i will not open it in inside this i will open inside the chrome because inside chrome you can basically see it inside inspect element inside console if you go i will just write first of all so you can here you can see the price like 55300 here just i, I have used this console.log for constantly updating the value so here you can see if the values is are really changing or not so here you can see it is zero because this api is not super fast now the value changed to uh, it was 3000 it, it, the last value was 300 now it is 301 which means this is indeed working and you can implement this in whatever way you want so i have just showed this for bitcoin you can just make the list uh, make a table and then you can show the prices of all the cryptocurrencies like that and of course you can do the decoration part so that is it for this video and i hope that you have got something useful from this and if you did please make sure to subscribe to our channel and just put a comment on whatever video you want next and thanks for watching